Hi everyone, welcome to Lifehouse Community Church Online. Uh, morning everyone, great to have you with us. Uh, if you tune in for the first time, my name is Mark, I'm the pastor of the church. And this morning is a special day. Today is Father's Day and uh, we want to uh, honour and uh, give thanks for all those natural and spiritual fathers that are in our lives. And um, I thought a great way of doing that this morning, great way of blessing you all, uh, is to tell some dad jokes. Um, some of you are already going, yes, do it. And probably some of you are going, oh no, I can't quite believe he's going to do this. But here you go, here's some uh, dad jokes for you. Uh, what do you call a laughing motorcycle? A yamaha ha 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 ha. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. Uh, which Bible character was the funniest? Uh, Samson, because he brought the house down. And um, the first French fries um, weren't actually cooked in France. Uh, they were cooked in Greece. ba bum -tsh. Um As you can see, uh, I'm on my own this week. Um, I think it was probably um, they didn't want to listen to the dad jokes and didn't want to be around uh, this morning. But um, enough of that, enough of dad jokes. Um, I thought it'd be great though, uh, if you could uh, engage in a challenge I wanna put out there. Um, go to our social media pages, uh, to Facebook, to Twitter, to Instagram. Um, search for, for Lifehouse Community Church. If you're not already following us, uh, then great. Then uh, you could follow us, it's a great time to do that. And um, uh, you'll see a post there for Father's Day. Um, I'd love it if we can post uh, as many dad jokes as possible. Um, and then also, um, it'd be great to post um, things that we're grateful for, for our spiritual or our natural fathers. Uh, you don't need to give names uh, if you don't want to. Uh, and then also, um, wouldn't it be great to, pray, to put up there things that we're so grateful for our Heavenly Father? Uh, we have a Heavenly Father who loves us and is... Uh, an, an amazing example of uh, fatherhood and so uh, you could post them I, I'd love to get as many as we can so do do that go to our social media pages and um, find the link uh, the, pay, the post and, and make a comment let's see how many we can get uh, but coming up on today's service uh, we have Keith leading worship uh, an interview with Rebecca and a chance to learn a bit of Spanish uh, so watch out for that uh, we've got a family song from the Houghtons, uh, we've got a story from Victoria and then Linda is going to be speaking to us, uh, she's part of Lifehouse Bista, uh, she's going to be speaking to us in Life in All Its Fullness is our series and this week speaking on Oh Outrageous Grace. Um, but why don't I just pray before we, um, before we go into worship this morning. Lord we want to thank you that you are our amazing Heavenly Father, that you love us, that you care for us, that you um, bring this grace to us, that we don't have to earn it. Um, thank you, Lord, that you love us so much that you sent your Son for each one of us. Um, you love to be in relationship with us. And thank you, Lord, that you want each one of us to grow. And I want to pray right now. We want to pray for all the dads, the the natural and the spiritual dads, Lord. May you bless them. May you strengthen them. May you uh, pour out your Holy Spirit on each one of them. May may they continue to grow in maturity, maturity and stature. May you grow the fatherhood in this church, Lord. May we be the fathers that you're calling us to be. And I want to pray, Lord, for us as, as we engage uh, in worshipping you and in your word this morning. I want to pray, may you speak to us, may you uh, come and be with us this morning. Open up our hearts and minds, may your Holy Spirit flood our homes, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, be blessed and please do engage in the service this morning. We're going to and sing Cornerstone now. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And as we sing the chorus, uh, weak made strong in the Saviour's love, let's just uh, come and receive that love 
from Jesus once again. Let's come and uh, receive from him so that we're made strong uh, through his love, strong through him who first loved us and gave his life uh, for us. Let's sing, My Hope is Built.
Thanks, Keith. Uh, it's great to be able to glorify and worship God's name together. And now we're just going to hear an interview with Rebecca and myself. I'm not going to say any more because you're going to uh, hear the interview. Hi, Rebecca. Great to see you. Um, I wondered if you could um, tell us uh, who you are. So, firstly, hi everyone. Um, it's nice to be able to talk to you from so far away <laughs> um, and give you a big old uh, greeting from uh, Bogota, Colombia. Um, so, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Rebecca. Um, I have been part of the Bitter Church since I was uh, very little. Um, I'm Andrew and Linda Ridgeway's daughter. Um, uh, I, yeah, I yeah, grew up in the church, grew up in Poundon. Um, and I've currently was, uh, been in Bogota, Colombia, for about the past um, eight years, um, serving as a missionary. That's great. And um, uh, it's brilliant how technology works and we're able to do <laughs> this uh, all those thousands of miles away. Um, I wondered if you could tell us a bit about what you do, uh, why you're in Colombia, um, you know, uh, and a bit about what's going on at the minute. 
Um, sure. So I've been serving with um, YWAM or Youth of the Mission uh, for the past eight years um, in a ministry that has reached out to um, vulnerable people, um, mostly children, um, seeking to um, seeking to give, give them hope and uh, to share the love of God with them. Um, so my role for the past four years um, has actually been working with uh, women in one of the poorest sectors. Um, of Bogota, um, it's up in kind of one of the shanty towns on the side of a mountain, um, and I've been teaching sewing um, to women there, um, as well as then being able to disciple them and um, share the word of God with them. Um, this year, I also uh, started to serve in the church that I've been attending for the past um, few years. Um, so, working in the youth group alongside uh, the teenagers there, uh, which has also been um, a really big blessing. Um, been a new experience kind of working with people, with people who already know about Jesus um, so that's been um, a different challenge um, but yeah that's mostly what, what I've been doing um, so it all started I guess when I was 14 um, when I had um, so we had some teachers who came to Columbia as an Abbey followers who came to Columbia um, and they went back to the King of School uh, where I was studying um, and they kind of told us of their experience and um, I think since that moment, God just really put um, a desire in my heart um, or, uh, or love in my heart for the country and for the people. And um, it was something that I couldn't shake, kind of despite not knowing Spanish, despite not knowing <laughs> anything else about the country other than what they <laughs> kind of shared with us. Um, it was something I couldn't shake. Um, and as a 14 year old, I just um, I just prayed very simply, Lord, would you, if you want me to go there, I'll go. Um, not really understanding. <laughs> the uh, depths of that prayer or <laughs> the consequences of it either <laughs> um, but um, it was something that I just um, I couldn't I couldn't leave I couldn't get rid of and um, so yeah eight years ago um, I had the opportunity after studying Spanish and learning to speak the language to, to come um, and um, yeah I've been serving here kind of ever since. Wow brilliant um, eight years ago um, time flies um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and and great great to um hear how um you've been obedient to what god's spoken that um he spoke to you when you were at school and uh you're now doing what he's asked you to do as as well and um that that can't always be easy um doing that um are there things that you find difficult being that far away and and those sorts of things um yeah i think i think especially recently with um the birth of my niece and nephew kind of the cost of leaving family behind um has been one of the biggest challenges i think for me um yeah just not being able to kind of share in those um special moments that <laughs> you sometimes take for granted i think when you get to have Sunday lunch all together all the time <laughs> um, or, or be there for birthdays and, and holidays and businesses. So I think um, for me recently, that has probably been one of the biggest challenges is just not being a part of family. And I think one of the really interesting things about missionary life is that you lose your sense of belonging because you um, don't really belong in the country that you're serving in. <laughs> but then you also pick up so many things of their cultures and, and kind of customs that when you go back, to the UK <laughs> like you don't always really belong there either <laughs> um, so that I think that's another kind of challenging aspect of it as well that, that kind of just in betweenness of, of two different mm. places and two different cultures can be a, can be a challenge as well mm. and and what keeps you going in that time then what helps you to keep doing what you're doing um, I think for me I've just always had a desire I guess, to serve God and to be obedient to him. And I think I look back I, as a teenager, I really had no expectations for myself. I, I kind of thought I might end up working in Tesco's on, the, on a checkout. That was pretty much, I just had no dreams and no, no vision for anything, um, anything beyond that really. And actually to see kind of how God has, um, changed me and shaped me and molded me and, and has been able to use me for um, for his glory and, and, and to, to bring hope um, to different people's lives I think is something that 
just um, I, I wouldn't want to give up and <laughs> it's something that is, is so precious and um, yeah I think in challenging moments it, it's helpful to just remember uh, remember the good things to remember um, yeah the things that God has, has done um, throughout these last eight years. Mm. Yeah that's great and, and we we really appreciate you um, being out there and see you as part of uh, the church here in Lifehouse, even though uh, you're thousands of miles away. Um, it'd be great to hear um, if there's a story of hope or um, something that, that you've seen God do in the last um, little while. It'd be great to hear that. Um, sure. So I think one of the, the stories I think that has most blessed and encouraged me recently has been the story of a lady called um, Jenny. And so I met her, I think a couple, I think two years ago, maybe. Um, and when I met her, uh, she was quite guarded and quite closed. Um, but as we kind of got to know her, as we got to teach her sewing and, and talk with her, she um, kind of opened up. And she was one of these uh, ladies who had been told that that she was nothing, that she was nobody and that she'd never achieve anything. Um, and she's had um, her first daughter as a teenager, um, hadn't finished her education um, and was just... Mm just really lost and just um just really hopeless and um she came sewing and bless her she wasn't the most talented sewer <laughs> we did a lot of unpicking <laughs> and re-sewing things uh, but she really persevered no matter how many times i told her to, to unpick it and do it again she persevered and she she did she completed the course um and um as she completed it we kind of talked about what she was looking at doing next and she um had decided that she wanted to go on the study and she's always been really good at um, like things with um, hairdressing and, and beauty and stuff like that but she didn't have any qualifications so she hadn't been able to get any work or anything like that um and she also needed to finish her high school um diploma before she could think about anything else um and it was just something that she'd never ever considered before um but as we kind of talked about this as she graduated and got her certificate for sewing she was like okay i'm, I'm gonna enroll and I'm going to get this 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 diploma so that I can go and study like I'm determined to do it um and I think it was maybe in January um I hadn't been I hadn't seen her for a, quite a long time um but I suddenly got this message through that, I know, there's, there's pictures of her with her in a, in a lovely dress um with her graduation cap and, and her diploma and she was like Brocky I did it um and it was just I think for me that sense of um this person who who really yeah, I didn't have, again. This person who was just really lost and just had been told all these negative things um, throughout their lives, and actually, um, we've been able to sow that sense of worth in her and sow that sense of the sense of that she could accomplish this and she could do this. And to see her kind of taking that and just running with it um, was so encouraging. Um, and to see her finishing um, her, her degree, her, um, her high school diploma, so that then she could then go and study. Um, further on and to be an example for her two daughters now um, was just something that has really encouraged me this year. Mm. Wow that's amazing um, seeing someone go on and achieve that and the hope that it might bring is is just brilliant. Um, I'm sure her sewing would be far better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there would be an awful lot of unpicking to do. Um, uh, that's great. So I wondered if you could uh, teach the whole church maybe something that they could say in Spanish. Okay, so something you all will always hear in a Colombian church is Dios te bendiga, which is God bless you. So that's kind of, it's, it's yeah, they'll say it to everyone at any, any opportunity. <laughs> so it's Dios te bendiga. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> say that again. Dios te Dios. bendiga. Te bendiga. Okay. There you go. <laughs> we can all we can all now say that to each other when we you see. Can all now give, give yourselves a blessing. <laughs> um, brilliant. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Um, really appreciate your time. Um, it's been uh, great to chat, and we'll we'll definitely be praying for all those things. Thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely service, and I hope to see you soon at some point when the airport's open. <laughs> Absolutely. It was great to hear Rebecca's interview there. And we're, we're going to pray for Rebecca. Um, Rebecca is someone that we support as part of our church. 
uh, like she said, she's all the way over in Colombia. And um, in a moment, Rebecca's going to speak again. She's going to share some prayer points. And then a three-minute timer will come up. And uh, we want to pray for Rebecca and the things that she gives us the pointers for. But let's pray for her in the weeks and the months to come as well. Um, she really values and appreciates knowing that we're praying for her as well. Her as well. So here's her prayer points. And then the three-minute timer will appear as well. Um, yeah, so for prayer points, we really appreciate prayer um, for obviously the people in the country, especially um, the poorer people. Um, we've been in, obviously in quarantine for three months and whilst there has been some social aid, um, people are starting um, to really struggle uh, with the lack of employment um, and the lack of income. Um, so just to be praying uh, for them and for God to be providing um, for them. We are obviously trying to support the families that we serve as much as possible in that in that area. Um, but there are lots of families who are who are starting to really struggle. Um, we also just really appreciate prayer for obviously the government and the leaders of our country as they're having to make very difficult uh, decisions and um, a lot of power has kind of been given to local leaders now. Um, so kind of each uh, county, to say it that way, kind of can make up their own rules. Um, and we'll just be praying that that they really prioritise um, the safety um, and well-being of the people rather than um, economic or personal gain, um, as corruption can play um, a large role. Um, we'd also appreciate prayer um, for continued peace in the country. Um, whilst the FARC has been um, disarmed, uh, the second biggest guerrilla group has started um, to kidnap uh, children especially and they've been using them to plant mines um, around the country um, so we'd just appreciate prayer as well for the safety and protection of children especially who are being um, kidnapped um, and just for the protection of people especially in rural areas which is where they're most active um, and that peace a peace not a peace agreement with this particular group can also be reached um, I guess in terms of the ministry we'd really appreciate prayer for um, our ministry leaders, um, we're just in a really uncertain time at the moment, um, not really sure how projects are going to look and how ministry is going to look kind of out of this and certain decisions have to be have to be made and um, we just appreciate prayer, um, I guess, for wisdom and guidance um, to know kind of what God is doing in and through this time and, and how we can be of service in this time and then kind of what ministry looks like after afterwards as well. Um, We'd also um, ask you to pray for one of our staff members, Gonzalo, who um, who just before the quarantine started had an operation um, to take out his, his appendix and his gallbladder. Um, but during that surgery, the doctors also found a tumour or, or a mass on his liver. Um, however, due to the quarantine, um, all kind of specialist appointments were cancelled and so he hasn't been able to get a biopsy done to see if it is cancer um we should be praying that that uh well i guess a for his we'd be praying for his um for his health um for his healing um but also as well that he can get the appointments um that he needs um so that he can receive any treatment that he that he really needs as well um and i guess on a personal level um, I've just been praying a lot this year about kind of the next steps kind of towards the future. Um, I kind of have felt that this will be my last year serving in Formando Vidas. And um, I guess I'm just kind of asking God to reveal what that next step is. Um, I feel like I'm supposed to continue serving in Colombia and Bogota, but um, I'm not sure what that service looks like at the moment. Um so I just be praying that God would open up the doors that he desires for me to walk through um, and that I can just yeah, hear him clearly and also just to be able to trust him in the waiting, which um, which is hard going at the moment. Um, I'd also appreciate prayer against kind of any discouragement. Um, it's been a long three months <laughs> and a quite lonely three months. Um, and I think... Um, yeah, I think just emotionally it's kind of getting to that place where it's it's just hard and I'd um, just appreciate prayer for God's grace and for encouragement um, throughout this season. Um, and I'd also ask for prayer um, 
for some exams that I have for the next two weeks. Um, I'm just finishing my first semester of Bible school, um, which has been really good. But um, yeah, I just I just appreciate prayer that I can understand the questions and that um, I will be able to pass the tests well. <laughs> We've got a song for you today called All Through History and we're going to try and remember all the words and all the actions. And okay? Daddy's going to play the keyboard and I'm going to do the action and my girls go to do anything they want. <laughs> there you go. Ready? No one built the most enormous boat Except the birds and animals afloat the Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Noah lived his life for him. Ready this time, Moses. Moses led his people through the sea, taking them away from slavery. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Moses lived his life for him. Thank you. Oh, thank you, oh, thank you, that all through history you were faithful. Thank you, oh, thank you, that you are just the same when it comes to me, when it comes to me. Okay, this time it's David. The humble shepherd boy became a king The Lord was good, the Lord was strong And David 
lebt es ja weg. Daniel, Daniel was inside the lion's den, but God brought him to safety once again. The Lord was good, the Lord was strong, and Daniel lived his life for him. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. That all through history you were faithful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That you are just the same when it comes to me. When it comes to me. Jesus died to take away our sin. Jesus died to take away our sin. So we could get to know our God again. The Lord is good. The Lord is strong. And we will live our lives for Him. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. That all through history you were faithful. Thank you. Oh, thank you, that you are just the same way. Thank you, thank you, oh, thank you, that all through history you were faithful. Thank you, oh, thank you, that you are just the same when it comes to me. When it comes to me. When it comes to me. When it comes to me Yeah, well done everybody Good job It was finished now <laughs> It was finished now, say bye Bye Good morning Today's theme is all about outrageous grace But what does that mean? What is grace? Well, grace simply means not getting what you deserve I've got a couple of little stories to tell you That will hopefully help you understand what grace is a long time ago in a place called Jericho, there lived a man called Zacchaeus. Look, here's Zacchaeus, can you see him? Zacchaeus didn't have very many friends and he wasn't a very nice man. He was a tax collector. That means it was his job to visit people's homes and collect money from them. We still pay taxes today and our money goes to help hospitals and schools and people who need our help. But Zacchaeus was not a very honest tax collector and he kept some of the money for himself. That's why nobody liked him and everybody knew he was mean. Well, one day Jesus was coming to Jericho. He was really famous because he kept doing miracles and everybody in Jericho wanted to hear Jesus speak and see him for themselves. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus too. There were crowds and crowds of people and Zacchaeus couldn't see. He was quite a short man actually and nobody was going to let him through because he was mean. So Zacchaeus climbed a sycamore tree which was actually quite a strange thing to do considering he was a tax collector and worked for the government but he climbed the tree anyway. And you'll never believe what happened next. Here's a picture. Can you see that? Jesus called Zacchaeus down from the tree. Zacchaeus, come down from the tree. I'm coming to your house for tea. Well, Zacchaeus couldn't believe it. Jesus knew his name. Jesus wanted to have tea with him. Jesus, the most famous person in the land, was coming to his house. Imagine how Zacchaeus felt. Did he get what he deserved? No. Even though he'd made some really bad choices, Jesus decided to bless him. That's actually not the end of the story because you'll be pleased to know that Zacchaeus realised he'd done wrong things and he paid back all of the money that he'd taken. Here's another little story about Grace. Imagine this. This is Bella. There's a little girl called Bella and she was at school one day. She was not having a good day. She wouldn't listen to the teacher and in fact she was quite rude to the teacher. At playtime she was unkind and she wouldn't let her friend Sam join in. And just as the day was nearly coming to an end, Bella refused to do her writing and instead she drew little pictures all over her work. When Dad came to pick Bella up, Bella's teacher spoke to Dad and told him what had happened and they walked home in silence. When they got home, Bella's dad sent her to her bedroom to think things over. 
When her dad came upstairs a little bit later on, Bella said, are you going to take away my iPad and make me go to bed really early? Dad looked at Bella and he said, I think that sounds like a fair punishment, don't you? But no, I've come upstairs to tell you that tea is nearly ready and that after tea, I'm going to take you to McDonald's for ice cream. Wow. Did Bella get what she deserved? Nope. Her dad blessed her instead. Just before I say goodbye, you'll be pleased to know that Bella went back to school the next day and said sorry to her teacher and to Sam. God shows us grace too. He doesn't treat us exactly how we deserve to be treated. He blesses us too. Goodbye. Good morning everyone. I've been asked to speak on Outrageous Grace today as part of our series on living life to its full. I'm going to start by trying to give a definition of grace. It can be seen as undeserved favour. Doing something for someone that they don't deserve, could not earn or ever repay. God's riches at Christ's expense. We see that in the work of the cross. Giving us what we need, not what we deserve. The power from God that gives us both the desire and the ability to do his will. And it's not because I'm good, it's because I'm yours. There's many biblical examples of grace. Here's just a few of them. It's a farmer paying a full day's wages to a deadbeat crew of labourers with only a single hour on their time card, Matthew 20. It's a man marrying an abandoned woman and then refusing to forsake his covenant with her when he finds out that she is a prostitute, Ezekiel 16. It's a shepherd who leaves the 99 to look for the sheep that has stupidly wandered off, Luke 15. And in the same verses, it's the love of, his, of the father that hands over his finest rings and robes to the young man who has squandered his inheritance on his fair weather friends. It's also the forgiveness of one of your best friends when they deny you, not just forgiving them, but trusting them again and raising them up to do an important job for you. Matthew 26. The word outrageous in the title can mean shocking, unusual, improbable, excessive. And I hope just the few thoughts that I'm going to offer today will help to see that God just doesn't drip grace into our life but he actually lavishes it upon us. It is excessive. It is improbable. It is unusual. It is quite shocking. I want to start with the grace for salvation. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. We're all in need of rescuing, in need of reconciliation with our Heavenly Father. And it's by grace that we can receive that salvation that we are made right with God and that we can enter into a relationship with him. Ephesians 2 says, God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. And Romans 5, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And this salvation is universal. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but would have eternal life. Whilst preparing this talk, I came across a true story of a prison in Brazil. Some 30 years ago, this was turned over to a group of Christians to run according to their faith and principles. Part of this was to give the inmates responsibilities to help run it. One day, Chuck Colson visited the prison. He was let in by a murderer who held the keys. He was astounded to see men at peace with themselves and God, working industriously and smiling. He was taken to a notorious prison block that was once used for torture and was told it now held just one prisoner. 
Are you sure you want to go in? asked the escort. Chuck had been to many prisons. He'd been in isolation units and torture blocks before, so he wasn't phased at all. But he was shocked when the door was swung open. And instead of the person that he was expecting to see, he saw a beautifully carved wooden crucifix. The prisoner was Jesus, hung upon the cross. The prisoner explained, This is to remind us that he's done time for the rest of us. Jesus has served your time, paid your penalty, taken your place, taken your punishment. That's all by grace. It's nothing we deserve. It's never been earned. We could never actually do that. It's all by grace, undeserved favour. So how do we receive it? The law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And thankfully, there aren't 23 steps or four pathways or eight rituals to go through to earn that grace. All you have to do is put your faith in Christ. Saying yes to him is demonstrating that faith. It's unearned, it's undeserved, it's unrepayable. Instead, it's because you have been chosen and God wants to make you his own and will pursue you to make him his child. Although it's free, grace is not cheap. It cost Jesus his life. In fact, it's the most expensive gift of all. God's riches are Christ's expense. You may know all of this or you may perhaps be hearing this for the first time if you've just tuned in today. But for all of us, it's good to reflect on this. So please feel free to pause the video at any time just to thank God for what he has done through Jesus, his outrageous grace, and perhaps say yes to him again. To continue, in 2 Corinthians 6, um, these verses. So we beg you, do not let the grace that you receive from God be for nothing. And there is a danger that we receive our salvation one way by grace, but we actually live live our lives in a different way under legalism still. We still feel condemned. We still compare ourselves to others. We may feel like we're not good enough. We haven't done enough. We're not worthy of God's love. We may have even begun to develop holy rituals, again, in a sense, to try to please him. But the life of fullness God offers us is freedom from all this. Guilt, condemnation, constantly trying to be good enough, better, the best, earning his love. There is nothing we can do to make him love us more or to make him love us less. I know that this is counter to our culture. I hear myself even saying to my grandson, if you're a good boy, I'll let you do this or have that. In the same way, at school now, education is very much target-led. Um, and if you don't meet these targets, you become a failure even at the age of five years old. At work and in, in employment, bonuses are all based on performance, not on being kind, faithful or loyal. But God says, you can receive my riches, my reward, my love, my salvation, my fullness of life, not because you deserve it or have earned it, but because you are mine. And maybe some of us just need reminding of that fact again today. This doesn't give us a license to live our lives any old way. As we've already said, while grace is free, it's not cheap. It costs Jesus everything. But grace itself as a gift can help us to choose to live godly lives in accordance with his word. It should motivate us to do that if we truly understand it. It's not a one-off act, grace that just brings salvation, it continues to flow to us and should permeate and penetrate our lives, making a difference. Romans 6 verse 15 says, What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? 
by no means. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to sin, so now offer yourselves to slaves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. We have the power of the Holy Spirit, which is received by grace, to overcome bad habits, temptations or habitual sins, to live lives pleasing to him and for him. Philippians 2 verse 13 in the New Living Translation says, God is working in you, giving you both the desire and the power to do what pleases him. And this is grace still at work in us, in our lives. If we trip up and fall by his fall, by his grace, forgiveness is there for us to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Forgiveness is forgetting as well as not holding that thing against us, but by grace letting it go. So once again we have a clean slate. That was Peter's story I kind of alluded to earlier on. Being able to live in right relationship with God and others, knowing total forgiveness for our mistakes is a must to know life in all its fullness. Otherwise we are crippled. Bitterness can take root and it can rob us of our peace and even our health. It is by grace that we are also being transformed from the inside out. I love the t-shirt that you can buy that says, be patient with me, God hasn't finished with me yet. In 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10, Paul gives a testimony. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was in me brought about those changes in him from a persecutor of Christ to one of his most well credible followers. But he knew that it wasn't his works that had done that. Grace is given freely, but how we receive it will determine how effective it is within us. It's not, because, it's not given in any way because of our works, past, present or future, but it's given to encourage work to achieve and to achieve what's necessary to bring glory to God. So although we don't get it because of the works that we have done, we get it to enable us to do God's works, to live for him as God's fellow workers. So in effect, grace gives us purpose, which is another prerequisite of a fulfilled life. Some of that changing actually happens when we go through trials and tribulations. That's in Romans 5. The latter can be character forming or it can make us bitter. It can be a stumbling block or a stepping stone. I once read a book called The Bumps or What We Climb On and that's if we choose to do that. Trials don't automatically make you mature but they can if you push into them and rely on the grace of God. Jesus says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. That's in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. God's grace continually flows from his throne, day by day by day. But we can resist it. And there are three ways in which we can resist it, which I think it's important for us just to touch upon today. In James 4, God talks about God resisting the proud but giving grace to the humble. So pride can be a way in which God's grace is resisted. Bitterness, see to it that no one misses the grace of God, that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. That will too block the grace of God in our lives and relying on our own works. The book of Galatians um, was written because the Christians there had started walking in the spirit but had fallen back into trying to earn their salvation by their own good works. I'm just going to sum up what I've said today 
And I feel like I've only just kind of scratched the surface and maybe there's a lot more that you would like to study on and you're looking at grace. I'm sure um, you would benefit from doing that as I have. But the, in summary, it's only by grace that we are saved. There's no other way. There is nothing we can do to make him love us more or less. We would never be worthy to approach such a holy God. So it's only by his grace that we can do this. His grace is freely available to us each day by the infilling of the Holy Spirit. By this he leads us, he guides us, he comforts us, he enables us in the good times as well as when we face trials and temptations. We have the assurance of forgiveness because of his grace we don't have to be weighed down with guilt or shame but can be washed clean and have a fresh start. Even just while preparing this, I felt convicted actually of um, a relationship that hadn't been right for a while and um, instead of blaming the other person, I I said sorry to God, I said help me, help me to be different in my heart and I do feel that that's happened, that immediately there was a change and a washing and a fresh start and I can feel my attitude and um is different towards that person but also I've been forgiven as well it's something that has just been yeah it's just been a blessing to to receive this week we are being changed by his grace to be like Jesus freedom from besetting sins habits wrong attitudes motives can be ours by grace we don't always have to stay as we are we can change by God's grace we are given purpose by his grace. I think for me that was one of the things I felt so restless when I became a Christian. Didn't know what my life's purpose was. So actually knowing I have a purpose to be a co-worker with Christ is something that has given me so much more satisfaction in my life and fulfilment. It gives us the desire as well as the power to do this, his grace. His grace pursues us and holds on to us before we're Christians and afterwards. And his grace never gives up on us. I've been really blessed by listening to the Corey Ashby Reckless Love song. And um, in that he's talking about God's love, but that's given by grace. It chases me down. It fights till I'm found. It leaves the 99. There's no shadow you won't light up, no mountain you won't climb up coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. And that's what God says to each of us today. That's how much he loves us, how much he wants us to know his saving um, grace. Although grace flows continuously from the throne, it can be resisted by pride, bitterness or self-effort. I hope you will agree that it's outrageous, it's shocking, it's improbable, it's excessive. And um, as a response to that, um, I just want to read the last the words again from 2 Corinthians 6. So we beg you, do not let the grace that you receive from God be for nothing. Be blessed. Hey.